What worries me is that in the past markets used to be about bringing money, ideas, entrepreneurship, and then creating something, businesses, something that employs people and solves problems in society. Today, from hedge funds to even these other traders that might have a good intention, we are all increasing into this casino economy that in reality will not benefit 90, maybe more than that percent of participants. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I receive a lot of questions regarding what is going on. If you are on the Twitter, you would probably notice Elon Musk tweeting something very interesting, which is that you cannot sell house you don't own, you cannot sell car you don't own, but you can sell stock you don't own. And he said the shorting is a scam. Musk was talking about event that was unfolding where hedge funds were shorting the stock of GameStop. It's a retail that sells games, consoles, and things of that nature. He had experience with uh, firms trying to short his own stock, Tesla, for many, many years, and he literally hated these guys. So what is short selling? What is going on here? Well, short selling aims to profit from something falling down. So normally in a business, you profit when things are improving, stock uh, prices increasing. That is usually the result of some sort of economic activities. But what these short sellers are doing, they are trying to profit from things collapsing, going down. So this is counterintuitive. This particular company had some sentimental value in the eyes of many of these young millennials and other traders who used to buy games and live in that period when uh, we all, I think, uh, went through this phase, when we all glued to our screens playing games with our friends. When they heard and realized that big, giant Wall Street firms are shorting the stock, trying to collapse it and profit, something happened. And I think some of these uh, uh, fund managers, they were even provoking them that they don't know what they're doing and belittling them and so on. So what happened, this community uh, on one of these Reddit threads um, or Reddit forums uh, spring into action, they started buying the stock. So what happens in this scenario is when you are trying to bring down the stock price and attacking the company, the fans, these Reddit traders, they are trying to squeeze you, they are trying to push you out. And the way that they do that is they try to increase the stock. And that's exactly what happened. They attacked, they started increasing the price, and the stock went 1,000% higher than it was. That had detrimental impact on hedge funds that started losing billions of dollars. It was described almost epic battle between David and Goliath, or Dawood and Jalut. In this story that most of you probably heard, we have a young boy at that time, Prophet Dawood, being challenged to duel with the leader of a huge army. That leader, Jalut or Goliath, challenged everyone to fight him. And at that time, Muslims were very small, and this young boy was... Um, without any heavy armor, without any heavy weapons, not a match at all for this giant uh, warrior that uh, Goliath was. He was in full armor. They said that many people would have to even just carry his own sword. That's how heavy it was. So what happened? Young boy, Dawood, he had a slingshot. He threw the stone and hit only opening here at the forehead and the stone hit him in that weak spot. It killed him instantaneously and uh, then the whole army got shocked and they ran away. And this metaphor, while in this particular case, we don't necessarily have a David or David, we have a situation where much smaller force, uh, flexible for targeted specific opening in this huge institution, they threw a stone and they understood the game and they were able to inflict huge uh, pain. As I said, there is no doubt in this story, but the uh, lesson is that although they don't have a big firepower, these traders were able to exploit weakness in the system. And many people are thinking, oh, is this the end of capitalism or markets as we know them and hedge funds and Wall Street? It is game one, round one, for these 
small traders. But we shouldn't think that uh, it is going to just stay like that because you see the problem here is that the short trading, the, the way it works is a zero sum game. It's a purely speculative casino market where someone loses someone game. And these big guys, hedge funds, they are betting between themselves. And so the money is just moving from one hedge fund to another one. And maybe they lose on this side, but some other hedge funds, some other big broker and so on, they will win on the other side. At the same time, thousands of these small traders, they range from students who are gambling their student loans or hard-earned savings to some more sophisticated investors between them. Some of them will win, but vast majority will lose because you see the fundamentals of this company and many other companies, it's, it's not going to support this rise in this price. So when the price finally starts going down and crashing, what we are going to see is a lot of people will be disappointed. And this is something I want to talk to you about. The markets and this whole game on speculating, whether it's on the share market or currency or something like that, it's a very dangerous game. It's a very much a gambling, zero-sum game where you are leveraging your profit and you are trying to put a, a system or an instrument where you will gain from very small movements in the market. Sometimes they will cut for you, sometimes they will cut against you. And so what I see a lot of young people, when they enter into this, they don't realize maybe they have one win or two win, but more often than not, because they get into the whole casino side of things where they're just betting left, right, and center, uh, eventually appetite and this addiction kicks in where eventually they lose it all. So this system is not designed for somebody who has long-term hopes to secure prosperous future and do something that is positive. On my podcast that I just recently uh, recorded, Islamic Finance Podcast, I have described the mechanics of how the short selling works. And that is very simply a process where somebody borrows the stock and then they sell the stock that they borrowed in order to uh, get it back at a lower price and therefore profit in the drop. That is counterintuitive. Just a simple idea that you're selling something that you don't have ownership of, uh, something that Islam does not want to see this way of contract contracting. And uh, I know a lot of people are thinking, well, we have certain contracts in Islamic finance where it looks like as if this idea of short, shortening something and profiting from um, certain events might be um, acceptable. The whole idea when you profit should be that you profit from something that is benefiting other people, not from something collapsing, not from uh, cornering somebody until they submit and they have to give you the money. And that is the wrestling casino that we are seeing with these clever instrument, especially when it comes to these derivatives like options, where people don't even take the stock. As a Muslim, as ethical investors, what we want is to gain and profit from somebody, our customers, our people, economy winning and getting some value out in the world. We don't want to start creating situation where we are gaining because somebody else is losing. Our loss is their gain or their gain is our loss. What worries me is that in the past markets used to be about bringing money, ideas, entrepreneurship, and then creating something, businesses, something that employs people and solves problems in society. Today, from hedge funds to even these other traders that might have a good intention, we are all increasing into this casino economy that in reality will not benefit 90, maybe more than that percent of participants. And when I see the students who until yesterday couldn't differentiate between stock and a bond, go full in and then they lose it. And then I can see on these threads, they're talking about suicide. And I, I get very sad because this short term mentality, greed mentality, where you want to quickly get into something, get the money quickly not do anything productive. Because think about what these all traders in general, day traders, not the investors, you know, investing into stock and benefiting from underlying performance of the business is something else. But 
getting and buying and selling in a second. And now we have uh, algorithms and machine, uh, high frequency tradings, options, derivatives. These traders, even if they are buying something that is halal, but in those sort of intervals, they're creating this whole environment of casino economy. And they are not producing anything, not solving any particular problem. They are wasting time at minimum. At minimum, this whole buying and selling is wasting our time. Sharia put certain rules that we should follow in order to benefit us. Allah loved to see that we follow these rules and we benefit from these rules. If we want to change our situation in our ummah, if we want to really do something, we need to change things on the ground. It's not going to be short-term speculative trading that does it. It will have to be building businesses, organizations, building our skills, confidence, ability to solve the problems and bring the benefit in society. That is the long game. The short selling is just one sickness, an in sick instrument that people are using, but it comes from somewhere. It comes from this short, greedy mentality that is plaguing our society. I don't feel sorry for hedge funds that they have been hammered by these, these uh, traders. But if we really want to change something, if we really want to help our economy and organizations that, that we love to see that serve a community so well, then we need to do something different on the ground. We have many videos here. More, inshallah, will be coming. Subscribe to our channel. Our podcast, Islamic Finance Podcast, links and details are down there. Let me know what you think. What do you think is a big takeaway from this whole GameStop saga? See you next video, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.